Recent <coughs> Recently, Alex and I shot a video assembling what is the very first Linus Media Group manufactured CPU water block. Now, of course, our objective though in all of that was not to build a CPU water block because quite frankly, we could call up our friends at AlphaCool, EK, Swift, basically anyone, and they would do a much better job of it than we did, no offense. Yeah, none taken. The objective was for us to water cool a red 8K camera, but baby steps, right? So this was doing something pretty normal where we could basically clone a Chinese design <laughs> and then just put it on the CNC. Today, we kick things up a notch with this. We're gonna water cool something a little unusual, our 10 gigabit 12 port network switch from Netgear that was actually the first 10 gigabit piece of equipment that we got. Well, not counting like network cards, like, like, this, like a switch. The Hot Docs uses the ErgoDocs design, which keeps you comfortable typing away for long periods of time and features QMK firmware and hot swappable key switches. Check it out at the link below. Uh, so this is it. Um, they don't get their network switch anymore in the camera den. Yep, just unplug it? Yep. All right, well, do, oh crap, we were supposed to do the sound test first. That's kind of the whole point, if you guys, it's really loud. <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna be a very inexact, unscientific test here. 56 decibels sure. on boot up. Okay, let's water cool it. <laughs> How much does Steve pay us for all this product placement that he gets on our channel? Like nothing? <laughs> so the reason that network switches are really loud and run really hot is not necessarily because the hardware inside them it has a ton of power draw or anything like that, it's because cooling them is a real challenge. Most network switches, even at the prosumer level, are in what's called a single U, which is the, I don't know, the universal unit. That's where the U comes from. I'm just kidding, I made all of that up. Um, for height in a rack. So that means you can only use these wimpy 40 millimeter fans, and a lot of the time you also don't have a lot of ventilation holes for whatever reason. You know what's funny? I actually brought my own handle because I was using this for something before we started. So I can help. Oh man, I just stripped that bit. <laughs> that took a long time. I just, I'm gonna go get a bigger screwdriver. Oh, there's the one he stripped. Oh. Bloody hell, I just stripped this one too. See, I just had to go in straight. That's what my mom always said. What? I'm actually really looking forward to this. I have, it's, it's a funny thing, cause like computers, the first thing I do with them is open them up, like laptops and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's never occurred to me to open up our 10 gig network switch. At least this one. That's still not, oh. Oh, there we go. So up and back. Cool. Holy crap, there's a lot of stuff to cool in here. What is this? Are they ripping us off? <laughs> huh? Is there another port that they don't put on the front? Maybe they were just afraid of having it be 13. Uh, so here's our power supply that we're definitely not going to touch or even get close to. So my intention had been to keep it 1U mountable though. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then just have like tubing out, like quick connects or something, and then like an external rad. Okay. I mean, that's one option. I'm not married to it though. For whatever reason in my mind, I was picturing kind of like, this goes on here. Yeah. And we just like cut two holes for tubing and then mount a rad like right here. Like full like like engine block showing through the top of the hood, muscle car, muscle switch. And then I guess if you really wanted to, we could put like some T connectors in there so you can make it a one U, have it go out the side. So it looks like every one of these heat sinks is hard mounted. So there's screws going in from the bottom of the PCB and this whole main board needs to come out before we're gonna be able to remove any of this. Now to be clear, this is not as, ex as expensive as a RED camera, but this is still today, what, like an $800 network switch or something like that? I have no clue. 
yeah, let's be careful with it because I can't remember how much it costs either. It's not cheap though. Now, I always wonder if we could just get away with putting little copper things on here, sort of like you said, but then run a heat pipe just straight across all of them. If we used a ball nose bit that was the right size, we could cut a channel right in the top of it, the right size for the heat pipe. Yep. And then just solder it on and... And then we managed to spread the heat out that way. Okay, and that way we've just got this big spreader that'll carry the heat, theoretically, hopefully, towards our cooling. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute, what? Oh, no, the, oh, it was all soldered on. There's no way. How could they possibly be? That's gonna be a pain in the butt. Should I go get the soldering iron? Yeah. All right. What do you think the chances are that they're soldered on and then epoxied underneath? I was just thinking. Oh, we do have a wick. How hard do you think it is to just snip those? Oh. Uh... There. Easy as pie. I should have been wearing eye protection for that. Brandon, you're wearing glasses, right? Yeah. Do you think we can get in there and just give her like a little snip? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, you, you're doing it. You actually did it. You actually did that. That worked so well. Everybody's got eye protection on that figure. Everybody's going to be screaming so much. Like, they got so mad when I just like hacked off the DBI connector and that's like a that's bunch of pins. Fun. That one hit over there and then landed over there. This so is, is that it? so dumb what we're doing. Wow. Yeah, not bad. So you got a couple challenges. These look like they're up a little high. So we might end up having to kind of go around them. Um, also, not all these holes came clear. So we might have to either pop them back out or actually desolder them properly if we want mounting points for our block. Yeah. Your copper slab to cover it is probably the simplest way. Here's our main CPU block. And then we do a short heat pipe here and a long heat pipe here. This is actually gonna be pretty difficult. Yeah. I don't know why I wasn't thinking it would be difficult, but it's going to be quite difficult. Can we, can we do this where I actually, here, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can, can, we, can we pretend that I had something to do with this? And I'm like. Oh God, what did you do? Okay, you can do it. So. <laughs> How did you do that? Over the last week or so, he created this fantastic, well, I mean, what, what would you call this? Um, model? Yeah, it's just like a little model. So yeah, we have the switch here, all of the critical measurements for our water cooling is in there. And you ended up buying new calipers for that, is that right? Uh, yeah. Is it the Big Daddy caliper? No, it's the Alex's Alex. calipers. <laughs> and these are really fancy because? They're just very repeatable and expensive. Um, we had problems in the past where I would measure a bunch of things and error would stack up. So I guess there were a couple problems that we had to solve here. So the first is that I was pretty concerned that having this many heat sources on one heat pipe would cause problems. Um, so we have this paper here that sort of solved this for us, which is an investigation of thermal characteristics on a centered wick heat pipe with double heat sources. Basically tells us you want your heat sources to be as close to the condenser as possible. So our condenser is effectively this segment of the heat pipe right here, where it will be thermal epoxied to this copper plate, which is going to be water cooled. And then I guess other things, Jonathan from Ascend Ceiling contacted us uh, and we have a heck ton of O-rings. Like he's oh. just, he's just been raining O-rings on us. So. So we have better O-rings this time. Yeah. And also his cardstock is amazing. Like, look at this. It's quality. Yeah. Can we get some of this? No. And yeah, we have new O-ring lube. So basically. Nothing can go wrong. Yeah. Well, things can go wrong, but that's what we're about to get to. The hard part though, is that we have to actually machine this, so. Mm -hmm. How do you machine a rounded groove? So we have a ball-nosed end mill. Mm -hmm. So that's just like, it's round on the end and you just kinda, kinda just like that. Which was, this was like surprisingly hard to get to work properly. Uh -huh. So big shout out to CJ from Autodesk. He really, cool. it's gonna be like half a sketchy one because we can't go any lower than 78,000 RPM on our CNC router. So really we should be using a mill for this. We should be using a mill for this. But we don't have a mill because they're expensive. Yes. When you're going to cut metal, 
you need to make sure that every single time that the tooth comes around, you're actually like cutting out a chunk of metal or it's just gonna rub and it's gonna burn it out really fast. So since we can't make the tool spin slower, we need to run it faster. We're being safe, right? Yep. I don't want people yelling at us about our CNC. Uh, do you wanna plug in the air compressor? Yeah, I'd love to. We do have actual mist cooling now. So everyone that's saying you should have cooling, we already have cooling. Well, you can definitely see the schmoo here. So is this just getting like more and more legit every time we do a video? Yeah, basically. This is leaking. Yeah, it got dropped. So we're ready? Yep. Can I press go? Uh, not yet. I like to feel like I'm helping. And that's the tool that we have. So yeah, hit go. That is not that clean looking. No. done. So what happened there was the piece of copper that we're trying to cut shifted, which means that the entire tool path that Alex laid out is now offset by about three quarters of a centimeter. So it's possible that we would have ended up with something usable, but our thermal transfer is not going to be great. I mean, if it had held down, we would have something here anyway. I could probably yeah, be usable. But that's really bad for the tool, and we have to make four of them. And we're back, this time with a bit of a new plan. So now we have bolted our copper plate down to the bed. <laughs> we have also made some Canadian engineering repairs to our reservoir down here. It no longer leaks, thanks to some hand mix epoxy. And uh, we have done away with our plan to make rounded grooves because we don't have a mill. We only have a router. So why don't we just let the work speak for itself instead of telling them what's gonna happen. I can press go now, right? Um. Ah! Hey. see the finished product. So this is going to be the top of one of our blocks. This is gonna be the top of one of our other more different blocks. This is the block we made last time, which is still here again for some reason. We're using the bottom of it. Oh, we're just reusing it. Yeah. I mean, why dull your bits when you don't have to? Oh, is this it? Yeah. So this is the moment of truth right now. Oh! <gasps> Perfect. It really is actually. Yeah, it's 0.1 of a millimeter oversized. Good work. I'm happy with that. Um, I guess we just need to clean these off and tap them. Look at that. It just looks so good underneath. Completely see-through. We didn't bother facing it this time. That should go there. Yeah, that goes right. And then we'll have the three that go down the here. middle here. Whew. That's a lot of copper. Now you told me pro mode was gonna have the heat pipe on the bottom so that we were like heat pipe direct touch cooling. Yeah. Are we doing that with this one? No, not with this one. No. Oh. That's gonna be version two. What do you mean version two? We need to get this done because Ed's mad that they don't have a switch for their ingest crap. But. Ingest crap. Yeah, ingest crap. Get we don't, we don't need these videos. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to have to redesign this guy and Alpha Cool is coming up with those, like the server sized heat sinks. So those are gonna like go in the side and it's gonna look super legit. But until then, we're just gonna like have it Linus Tech 2 style, just like below the ingest station. Do these screws go through? Not quite. <laughs> we don't have to widen the holes in the PCB, do we? Are you kidding me? Well, it's potentially gonna be the quietest and coolest switch on like everywhere. Arguably a switch that doesn't power on anymore is very quiet and very cool. <laughs> uh, this bit might actually be too small. That went super well. Nope, we're good. What, that was it? Yep, that's, that's all that we needed. Oh, nice. <sighs> We should probably give this a little 
Dusty or yeah, Dusteroo. something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is pretty bad. Yeah, it was definitely one of the worst ideas I've ever seen. Like, am I just going at it with this? I, I like legitimately straight up forget how to do it. Um, what about this time we just like clamp it like this? Yeah. Off the table. Yeah. You can just kind of get this on the side like like so and blammo blammo. Okay. There are a lot of people that were really mad last time that we didn't use the drill press to do this. So oh, it really? would go down perfectly straight. Oh, yeah, that would be smart, wouldn't it? Yeah, it really would. You guys want to do that? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what the crap is this? Crap is what? This hole. It doesn't go all the way straight through. The drill press had an issue. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Oh, this is the really bad one. I don't know about that. Well, you'll be able to tell from the bottom. Oh, geez, what did you just do? That is, that's pure oh. carnage right there. Oh, God. That's a lot of acrylic on the floor. Yeah, uh, these don't quite line up. Well, like, do you want to tap those holes again? Oh, they're all the way over here. Ah. Oh, crap. Ah. Okay, so are we just kind of doing the same thing as last time then? Yep. <laughs> Acrylate me. Extra cyano on the side. And theoretically, it will seal. Oh, we're asking for a lot of tight tolerances to line up here. Yep. <laughs> we're gonna put that through a plastic washer. Okay, so that goes there. Then we do another plastic washer, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. Okay, then we do a nut. Yep. Nut me. There. <laughs> So I've realized something really unfortunate. Uh -huh. Where this right here screws in, I thought that it was just like nuts on the back that came up. Yeah. But it's actually screwed right into the chassis. Yeah. I don't know if these can come off. Oh. I can't believe that you got all these holes to mostly sort of line up. I measured it. Are you guys as excited as we are to see if this thing is still gonna work? I am. I'm amped. Assuming that we didn't kill it, it's gonna work pretty well. I mean, we didn't do anything that bad to it. Not really. We're not gonna actually power on the switch. We're just gonna power this pump and then make sure that nothing leaks. Did you fart? Yeah, but like a couple minutes ago. <laughs> it's really lingering. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. It's awkward. All right, well, given that our system here has passed our exhaustive three minute uh, stress test, would you say we're ready to power it on? Yeah. There's a light, David. Oh, it's green. Identifying, it's green. That means 10 gig link. Ooh, yeah. So test, and there it goes indeed. Boom. Okay, so now what? Now, now we, we actually get to put it together? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Damn. I have screen cap going, so you don't need to come over here. There is one more test though. It's possible that we're not making good contact with uh, anything. Like we actually don't know that just cause it's working, that means it's working well. I love that our fans just say failure. Cause they're not, they're not plugged in. Question for you though. Yeah. Uh, did you get new, like quieter, 40 millimeter fans to replace these? Well, I guess if it's just open, can we just stick like a 140 on top or something? Yes. Yes, we can. All right. Yeah, so what we can do is we can take this puppy, put it on, do a 140 millimeter cutout, mount the radiator to that so that nothing could slip through, put the fan on top and put a fan grill on. Disassemble this yes. and put it in and I'll get a hole in here? Sure. Cool. Are you gonna measure where the hole goes? Yep. So uh, I think we're almost done here. Um, okay. Speak for yourself because we need to power the pump. Oh. I think what we have to do is plug in the power supply and start probing. Uh -huh. 
in panic mode and I put it in the ammeter. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if anything still works. <laughs> 12 oh. volts, yay. Wow, it's a Christmas friggin' miracle. Okay, so that is ground and 12 volt. Look here. So ground is the far left, 12 volt is the third, theoretically. Orange is ground. What the f Black is positive 12 volt, and yes, Jake, it matters. Okay, I have good news though. Look what I found. What in the balls is that? This is a six pin PCI Express adapter. See these two pins? It's a six to eight pin adapter. We can use these two wires to find our 12 volt power and then splice that onto the power connector for the pump. So then as long as we get the right two pins, then we're good. Okay, so what did I say? Orange was ground, black was 12 volt? Yep. Neat. Theoretically, when I plug in the switch, it will turn on with no sparks. Power LEDs lit. Uh, and theoretically, okay, more sanity check time. I have 12 volts here. Oh, huzzah! What a nightmare. Yeah, now it just needs to get connected to this. Yeah. Other than the hole in beginning, this is actually surprisingly, like, sort of properly done. Yeah, like, sort of properly. I mean, there's no proper way to do something this stupid. Yeah, like, I guess if we could get a couple zip ties in there, like... Yeah! 100% pro. All right. A couple LTT cable ties. Get that shilling in there. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm a bit concerned about putting this on. How come? We have to kind of go over the tubes and just not slice them. Oh, but can you get your hand in there when it's like that? Uh, yeah, I have small hands. Here, if you let go here, I can help you align this side. You might as well have these ones kind of come up similarly, you know? Okay. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> the best part is that, like, it looks so good on the inside. Like, it's pretty, like, pro, like, all machine and stuff, and on the outside, it's just like straight, like ghetto, like <laughs> not even the same color tubes, hot rotted, like it's not very space efficient. It's very heat efficient. Yeah. Does it work faster? No. It's a lot quieter. Yeah. Did you see how quiet it is? I don't think I ever actually heard it, so that doesn't <laughs> seem like an issue to me. But uh, it was like, yeah, it was pretty loud. It's still working. Temperatures are actually lower. Damn. Well, we have a fan running on the radiator yeah. now, so that's an improvement. Yeah, we're looking at 27 and 28 degrees compared to like 51 and 42 before. It's dead silent. And let's do a quick file transfer here. Here we go. I'm liking it. Backblaze is an unlimited cloud backup for Macs and PCs that's just six bucks a month. They've restored over 35 billion files and they back up documents, music, photos, videos, drawings, projects, pretty much anything, and you can restore your files from anywhere. You can directly download them from the web or restore them by mail even. Their mobile app gives you access to your files on the go. And actually, this is great. If you do the restore by mail option, you can purchase or restore via hard drive. They will overnight FedEx you the drive. And then after you copy everything to your new storage device, you can return the hard drive to them for a refund. There's no wonky cost structures and it is truly unlimited data backup at a fixed price. So try it out fully featured for 15 days for nothing at backblaze.com slash LTT. Go there, play with it, start protecting yourself from potential bad times, and let us know in the comments below how much you like it. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can press that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. <laughs> also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which is 
definitely worth a join.